Riderly and welcome back to Writer's Ambition. And this is my lovely series co-host. Hi, everybody. I'm Cache. Nice to see you guys again. <laughs> yes, that's right. This is our third installment of Riderly Conversations. The first one was on my channel in December. No, in November. And the second one was on Cache's in December, right? Am I getting that? Nope. Nope, it was yours in December, mine in January, and now yours here in February. Right, 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 right. Okay, so <laughs> welcome back. And if you have not yet checked out the Writerly Conversation on Cash J's channel, we talk about our goals as writers and how we are shifting our paradigm for this new year. Head on over to Shay with the Hobbies and definitely check that out. Um, give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment. And here we are on our third installment of Riderly Conversations and here are the ground rules. Oh, man. <laughs> here are the ground rules. The ground rules are, this my channel. <laughs> this is my channel. I'm gonna say what I want. Shay gonna say what she want. And if you don't like it, you can feel free to respectfully disagree in the comments. If you get too crazy, Brick gonna have to block it and I get three years on my left every single time I hit the button so don't try me okay and here's Did the you get when she started talking about what she was gonna do is that what happened because now I got like the energy off of my shirt. I don't appreciate that I don't appreciate that at all time you're messing up everything thank you sir I said I want to be <laughs> who's getting, who's getting <laughs> it's me okay so those be the rules. I know Titan's cuteness might have distracted you, but don't get bucket. Don't forget them. Don't forget the rules. Don't forget. <laughs> don't, don't forget the rules. Because we're gonna say what we want to say. <laughs> All right. right. Don't forget them. So what we're gonna talk about today is um is interracial romances, like the subgenre of romances that's like it's all interracial. We're gonna talk oh. about how really that's there there's a um a project of black erasure under that if you just got offended calm down here's the framing for that for me personally and then you know cache let me know what your thoughts are me, okay, yeah, yeah, I, got you. I don't care like i i don't care about seeing a, a interracial couple of any of any kind walking down the street. It doesn't bother my soul. Congratulations for finding love. I don't care. Um, especially when for black women, and there's a, there is not even a history. Black women get a lot of flack, way more than black men for dating outside of their race. Cause then it's like, oh, race traders, oh, you, you all the time keep the black man down. Statistically, they're just not there. <laughs> like are black men around? Some of them, yes, but statistically, death, jail, um, especially when you start talking about black women in higher um, employment positions, it's hard to find men at that level if that's the kind of a partner that you want. It's, there are just a lot of factors that go into black women being able to date black men. And then there's also that like healthy sector that don't want to date black women. So I don't care about seeing black women dating white men that doesn't bother me what i'm talking about specifically is when i see an author and all of their romance is only interracial and it's only black men white women black women white men pairings that then begins to feel like black erasure because why is that the only pairing and if you continue to put that out through the generations right if all that that pairing ever is is black woman white man eventually the kids are just gonna be white 
So that is my that is my take on it. That's my main issue with seeing authors only do um, interracial pairings, specifically that are black woman white men. Um, so uh, for me, I will be quite honest. Um, I don't read interracial romance like period. Like I don't. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not black love it's a no for me dog like I'm sorry like I just I don't um specifically because I mean as y'all can see I am a dark-skinned black woman um so much of my life has been told to me in explicit terms and then not so explicit terms that I should be with someone who is lighter than me like so that my kids don't have to deal with that and so to me, for me personally, it is erasure, period. Black man, black woman, like it is. Um, I, I am fine with anyone doing whatever they feel. Um, to be very clear, I have dated outside of my race before, um, but it's not something that I would do again for personal reasons that I have. Um, and I feel that I want to read what I want to manifest in my life. Mm -hmm. I want to read the type of romances that are what I am looking for in life. Like, I personally am not looking for anybody that ain't black. I'm, I'm just not, you know, I'm, I'm not. Um, and that's my personal thing. And so that is what I choose to read. But for me on this like topic, it's very clear that in a lot of aspects of anything that has to do with media, may it be books, uh, magazines, TVs, commercials, like there is a lot of things that showcase that for some reason it's hard to show a Black couple. Like we get more and more magazines where you don't see Black couples, you see interracial couples. We get more and more commercials where you don't see black couples, you see interracial couples. You don't stop seeing white couples. They still exist. There are still plenty of books about those, plenty of movies, plenty of TV shows, plenty of commercials, but the amount of black couples you see is smaller and smaller. And um, you said something about a statistic and um, I want to uh, pull it up so that we can have it in uh, the comments, but it is a falsity that black men marry outside of their race more than they marry inside their race. Mm -hmm. Like the number is actually higher in the majority that black men marry black women. That's a falsity that we are pushed because it helps okay. to push further division. I want to say when, because uh, I did, a, uh, I, I did a, a debate on this a, a couple of years ago, I want to say that the, when I, it was, the number was like 70 something percent. Um, well, just like um, black men that are actually married to black women, like in black men that are married. I mean, what, um, what year was the was the data? Collected? I, I want to say this was that, and that's all I was saying. It, it, it okay. was within the last few years. Like it wasn't okay. anything. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't anything like way, way off. And um, because the argument was also that like black men are in the home. There's data to show that black men are spend more time with their children than anybody else. Like it's interesting these things that we are like taught and mm -hmm. we are pushed through the media that aren't really true. Like, honestly, in my mm -hmm. life, majority of people I know have never dated or been with somebody that isn't Black. I'm one of the only people that I know in like my friend group that has ever dated outside of their race. Or even like people I went to high school with, like things of that nature. I'm like one of the only people that has ever done that. And I think it's interesting that there is a narrative push that Black men don't want black women so black women should be like black women shouldn't want black men either and i hate that narrative yeah i mean well that's not that's not the version of the narrative i've heard specifically so i have and just looking at carceral data of the the number of black men that are mm -hmm. that are incarcerated that affects the the ability of oh, them yeah, to, no, like, on the off top 
I mean, right. It does that. Like it decreases the amount of black men that are marriable out here. I right. completely 100% agree with that. White right. supremacy at its yeah. At its we, finest. We, 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 we. Right. So right. Right. <laughs> there's that. Like there's just like there's just like the numbers game of it all. And then as far as like numbers of black men who don't want to to date black women, I don't have those numbers. I just have like personal experience of seeing on social media black men just being like oh well black women are so loud and just like those sorts of like personal experiences where you just hear black men denigrating black women or like well, that's why you know if it was a white girl she wouldn't be expecting an ex and it's like all right um some internalized racism you want to talk about there bud like what's going on um and whether or not those numbers are the majority i don't have the statistics but i've like from personal experiences that's that also <laughs> is around that affects the um, dateability of those men if they are too busy dealing with their own anti-black impulses to 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 find black women desirable and then i don't remember what the um what year this came out but everyone has definitely been reacting to it since then do you remember when that that survey was done on dating sites and apps where they were looking at the least desirable people on dating apps and it came up black women and Asian men. I don't remember that, but I know we talked about it before. Yeah. So j just that sort of thing where it's like across the yeah. board, um, that like that affects black women's like opportunities of dating, not of having sex because no one cares about that. But as far as like being a committed yeah, relationship. Right, right, right. That's the thing. And honestly, for me, I didn't really start even because you're very right when you were talking about, of course, we're always talking about like in this early conversation, narrative and representation. When we're talking about narrative and representation, I didn't really start peeping um, interracial relationships as having not interracial relationships, inter, uh, pushing interracial um, relationships or pushing um being mixed race. I didn't really peep that as an agenda or a fetish until, I mean, I guess relatively recently, because I, I was, I just wasn't seeing it proliferate this much five years ago, as opposed to like mm -hmm. now, because I, because I was reading interracial series and I, and it, it didn't ding on my monitor at the entire series, the entire series and all that author's corpus was on, mm -hmm. um, was, was black, women and white men like that didn't I never really noticed it until all these commercials when there are these like sandy blonde tan babies running around with a, a white parent and a black parent and that started to be the majority of what I see and you're correct that like white white families are still being right. represented heavily like they are not taking a hit from mixed race families being represented more like black families that are falling out and we already know that black families have been under attack in this country from the very beginning and so for that to continue i don't think it makes any sense for us to pretend like there's not a project of black erasure going on when that's always been the project and for us just to acknowledge right. that the project of black erasure extends into romance as well as any other part of life economics um carceral justice like those like as, as much as black erasure shows up in all those different places it also shows up in dating habits and romance and that sort of stuff as well and right. a perfect example were you gonna say something oh no i was just saying i agree i was saying i was agreeing and i was going through picking up i was like while you were talking like let me get this article so i can read it's uh it was a 2015 article like i said i argued this like a couple of years ago mm -hmm. so it was a 2015 article by pew research and okay. it was uh, in 2015, 24% 24, 24 of recently married black men were intermarried compared with 12% of newly married black women. So it is twice as much as us, but 24%, right. That means 76% are marrying right. black women. Or they're not married right. at all. But, Cause we don't know right. what happened. No, these are, married. no, no, no. These are all of re like everybody's married oh, okay. in, this, in this data. So okay. it's of the recently married men, 24% mm. of them were married outside of their race. That is interesting. Um, I, would, I would love to see them do that again now. Cause I, like, like I said, five years ago, I really wasn't noticing this as opposed to like in the past three years, right. I've seen a huge uptick in marketing. Right. And it has went up. They have a, a 2017 article that says that like it's, it's went up 
but that it's still the majority of black people black people still marry black people like that mm-hmm. is still the thing um, which it takes me to back like, to like go ahead. Ahead. i was just gonna say it didn't go up to like now half of black men are marrying that's how they like it's not that big it's not that big but that is the thing that they would like for us to exactly. think right? like yeah. that is the thing that they would like for us to think that it is and that's not it at all Yes, and that's what I was going to say is is it's interesting that that is the research and the narrative being pushed is that's what like that's what it is like just go ahead and do it everyone's doing it and I I not I feel like there is a fetishization of tannedness where there's still the right like everybody wants to be black so it's time to be black and so the answer to everybody wanting to be black until it's time to be black is we we'll just be mixed race like just be black enough to be exotic and cute, have a permanent tan. Um, But then you still have access to whiteness through like the texture of your hair or the color of your eyes or your your facial structure, like there's still an out to whiteness. And I think that um, that, that is what I'm saying. And I one, I think when I saw this, this is when something finally clicked for me that I was like, I feel like I'm in this sunken place. And it was when, um I watched oh what was that movie um Chloe and Hallie did the song for it A Wrinkle in Time um did you see A Wrinkle in Time no I didn't see it I felt like I was in the freaking sunken place I whoo I was like what is going on and I need to read the book so and so I can do like a book movie comparison I heard the book is amazing I've heard great things about the book same so I'm like, is this what we're doing? And then the way Ava DuVernay came up and did like a free movie, this movie cannot have happened without X exit. And then Oprah's in it. So I, I felt like I was about to be blessed cinematically. I was about to get a gift from mm-hmm. the cinematic black gods. And then I saw it and my head literally went from like this to like this to like this and I was like I'm so confused as to what I'm seeing because the representation of black love on every level was just not there black love um interpersonally on a familial level and a romantic level on a intimate level like there was no black love even self-love and it was distressing in the extreme so the little girl who's already mixed and her mom her mother looks mixed so she's like quarter black already and she looks like an ex- she looks the casting was amazing she looks like a mini replica of her mom and it's the girl Gugu her first name is Gugu I always forget how to pronounce her last name but she she was mm-hmm. the actress that played them mm-hmm. yes okay I know who you're talking about I don't know yes. how to say any of them either I will not disrespect her with trying to say her name like I know Ms. how Gugu. I get when people can't say cache so I'm gonna let you have that one <laughs> Miss Goo Goo, Miss Goo Goo M. She played. She she played and Bell did a phenomenal job. I love that movie. But anyway, um, she was the mother in A Wrinkle in Time, and her husband was white, and he had got lost in space in some like time. What did you say she was in? Hmm? The mother. She, what did you say she was? Bell. Yeah, I recognize. Like I recognize the name and whatnot and when you said she was an adult because i thought we were talking about the little girl so now i have to like, oh no sure who the mom no, no okay, the, the mother was google sorry, the mother. okay my bad and I'm yes. my bad. And maybe i'll put like a cast picture somewhere in the okay, cool. atmosphere so they'll know who we're talking about but the mother was google the daughter i don't remember what her actress's name is or what the character's name is i haven't seen the movie in years or i just i can't rewatch it um but this is the cast. Um, so just look at this cast, right? Like they look like little iterations of their parents. Let me tell you why that's strange. I'll get to that in a second. So already the little girl is quarter black, whatever. She's mixed. Um, she has like curly, very, very curly hair. There's this, and she's like, she's having trouble in school because she's been upset and dealing with like emotional things ever since her father disappeared and all of these things right she used to be a really good student now she's struggling with behavioral issues um she is she gets into a fight at school and I think it's because of someone picking on her little brother um who is adopted who is fully white um 
some girls are picking on her and this popular mm-hmm. guy white guy defends her she's sort of like demures and is like mm, okay um but he likes mm-hmm. her he very clearly likes her from the beginning and from the beginning she is unable to accept any affection any con- now let me be clear you don't have to accept someone's affection but she can't even take a compliment like he says i really like your hair and she literally is like please don't say that I was distressed immediately. Like you, like she seems to hate everything about herself and I can't get with it. Um, And then at the end of the movie, she finally like, she doesn't end up with the white guy, like they're kids. So there's not really any end up with, you just sort of see um, a pairing of friendship that has undertones of romance and they like they're in the same room together with like the girl's parents and it literally looks like they are a mini me of her parents a mixed black girl with a white with a white guy and I'm like do we see what this would end up with being in like two three generations everyone would be white and that for me I was like this feels intentional because they so look like mini me's of the of the parental um, of the parental pairing, where it's like a, a mixed race black woman with a white man who makes another mixed race woman who ends up with a white man. I'm like, you know, genetically, like that black is not going to stay forever. Yes, and it didn't feel accidental at all. And so from then, when I was seeing these these romances, and like the, nothing against the guys in the book, the guys were cool. But I'm like, is there a reason this guy who's super cool and like mature and emotionally developed had to be white and could not possibly have been black or any other non-white minority right because like I don't see that either yeah I think that like I feel like I don't know why when we choose to create interracial relationships we lean towards white and black as if there aren't other nationalities other races other things that people are um that's always been odd to me um yeah that's always just been a thing like for me I think the turning point for me was when we couldn't even get to we couldn't even create cartoon character commercial families that were black families like they were all interracial families like even in the commercials like you didn't even have to hire people to play the black family you could have just drawn a black family but you won't and i don't what questions are you talking about no like commercials okay. just like commercials for different things so i want to say was it i want to say there was like a kroger commercial i want to say mm-hmm. and the little girl is black the mom is black and the dad is white and it's like him not believing in like the christmas spirit or something like that oh. and it's a it's a cartoon like they're like claymation or whatever uh, the people, but they're not, you know, they're not actors and actresses. And so I was just like, why is this a, a such a hard thing? And for me, it's not that I don't think those need to exist, right? Because they are plenty of multiracial people in right. America, um, in the world in general. Right. That is a thing. I think to use that as a substitute for having to showcase black families is where I have an issue. Mm -hmm. Like if I saw equally as many black family, black couples as I see white families or interracial families, I wouldn't have an issue. But but it's like, I've seen these replace that. I don't wanna have to be on BET to get to see, to only see black people in commercials. Like that makes no sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. I don't I don't like that connotation. And then it's like then y'all wonder why we have BET because then we have to go to that channel to be able to see us in everyday commercials and everyday shows. Like it's like you you create the necessity for these things that we have that are ours that people feel that we don't need or are racist or don't make sense. Mm-hmm. Well, if you would include us, not erase us. Mm-hmm not integrate us but include us like it's a completely different thing right like Mm -hmm. yeah no i agree i (laughs) 
retweet on all of that. Like it, it just doesn't, I almost said it doesn't make sense, but it does. Like it's it's an agenda, it's a project, like oh, it's a right. strategy. Well, the, it, it makes strategy. absolute sense. Definitely a strategy. Like they're, they're, you're not strategy. accidentally doing these things. But you know what blows me? And I, I still don't know how to rectify this. Because if it was if it was just like white women or white actors who were writing these interracial romances, and again, interracial is not even really the sticking point. It's the the hyper focus, the hyper focus on black women with white men. And not even the reverse. Like I don't I don't see an overabundance of black men with white women. And I'm not saying that they're not out there, but the the but the Yeah, and you know why you probably does not because it's not stuff we would read, right? Like because I know that that's a thing <laughs> in like the romance erotica stuff. Like that's definitely mm -hmm. a thing. I would never read that. No. So <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I would I'm not. never read it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not reading it. It's not happening. I can't. Like, I mean this with my whole heart. So. No, I like, so you, you know, you know that I have an addiction to Theodore Taylor. I'm praying for her, y'all. Like, I'm yet to <laughs> praying for her. I think she needs to be delivered from this addiction. No, but I, understand that I understand, I understand that addiction, you know, it's a disease. You know, it's something you have to work out of your system. You know, I'm not going to throw you to jail into an unreadable place. You know, I, I want you to be able to, to come back into the fold one day. Y'all pay my strength. Like, I, it's a real addiction. <laughs> Cash no, is I have never in my life read a Theodora Taylor book, and I don't have to solely because she's going to make sure I know the intricacies of these twisted plots, like not plot twist, these twisted plots, like it's, yeah. And I mean, just get your money, write your stories, do what you do. I'm not okay. like, it's a no for me, dog. Like that's, that's just. I have a real addiction to her. Um, and you know, Cache knows a quarter of the Theodore Taylor books that I have read simply because I have taken hours of her life that she'll never get back telling her about these things, telling her the entire plot from beginning to end, do you hear me? Um, so I, I don't have a problem. I read a lot of interracial romance. That's why I can thoroughly say I'm sick of seeing that it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like it's proliferating. It, there's a hyper focus on pairing black women with white men and what I don't get, and I feel some tea bubbling up in my soul. What I don't get is when black women are the ones writing these narratives and I'm like, do you understand? Like, is this, is this for marketing? Did you have a discussion with your agent? Like, do you understand that there is a project of black erasure at play and the ways in which your multiple series are contributing to it. Out of, out of all of Theodora Taylor's books, I, I, I have only come across two that have two people of color who, have, who are melanated, right? Like not Italians, not Russians, not Japanese, Chinese, people of color who present as people of color. I've only seen two of her books that that have a black woman with a non-black but of color man and theodora taylor is prolific she's written a lot and i love her soap opera plots they get me every time dang it but i'm i'm still like what is going on and she's not the only one she is not the only one doing that and i just i don't it doesn't make sense to me i can make neither head nor tails of it I can't. Um, and so like the honestly, the only thing that I can think of is money. Like I could I could only think like it sells. Like that that's the only yeah. thought that I have is that it sells. And I'm not entirely sure if that's true. But like to me, what other reason would you have outside of something super negative? 
and I don't want to speak something negative right. on that woman and her writing. Like the only positive thing I can see is that it makes you money because it doesn't make sense that because it can't just be seeing black women happy because that's not your stories like that's not it like they're they gotta go through hell and back to get to happy like it's so it's not like they're living happily ever after this isn't a stressful life that they're going through right like so that's the other reader right right so it'd be different if it was like these are fairy tale relationships type of deal. Right. But it's like, nah, you like, so it can't be that, well, if she was with the black man, she'd be going through hell. Like, sis, ain't she going through hell now? Like, I don't understand it. Like, what is the issue with that? I don't, right. I don't get it. I don't, yeah, and I, I don't get it. And honestly, and this, this is the tea that I felt bubbling up in my soul. I don't just see it in the romance genre. And it gets awkward. And I'm oh, trying to see, that's it. what I've been waiting on, honestly, is all the other books in which it happens. Because, like, bro, like romance for money makes sense, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's what you have to write mm-hmm. to get your coins in that genre. They understand that. That makes sense. Yeah. How does that play in fantasies that have nothing to do with romance? That you have romance as a B-plot? That's the awkward part. And and still still black women doing this. And it's it gets awkward. But I to 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 say generally without calling nobody's names, and if you know them, you know them. If you don't, if you don't see, if you know, if you haven't seen the matrix yet, in due time. Um, but I do see <laughs> in fantasies where it's like all and there be multiple male love interest and they're all white and I'm like feels weird to me like why are they why is every single one of these young men why and they're nice young men it's not about whether the guys are nice it's about the choice to represent a white body instead of a black body as as worthy of romance and honestly, at a certain point, as even alive in a world where they could have access to romance, I don't be seeing Black men in these stories at all. They're not even so available for romance. Other, like, and that was going to be my thought. Can we just talk about how in these stories, how, how so many times these Black lead characters don't have Black friends? <clears throat> like... Like you don't have none and you as a writer don't think there's a problem with that because even if that's your reality if that was your reality that was definitely a problem for you that you were the only black person it definitely made you feel some type of way so like I just I so one person that I think does an amazing job and hers are like some interracial relationships some aren't but they're always black latinx elizabeth acevedo like i am the biggest elizabeth acevedo stand there is as of now like i am almost through clap when you land and i she has yet to write something that i don't see as five stars like i love it and she represents everything. Like there's always like an LGBTQ storyline in there. So there's like always that representation. Like she covers everything. And it's always a balance of the Hispanic and the black, the Latinx and the black. Like there's always a balance of that. And she does well, she does well to be honest to what those characters are and what they go through. And it doesn't ever bother me. It doesn't ever make me feel some type of way because I think her execution is amazing. Mm -hmm. And she always has, there's always a good friendship. There's always something like someone that you can, like, I love that in all of her books, there is a good female friend. Like there is, there are two females and they have a good friendship. I love it. Talked about that a couple of episodes ago, my writer's ambition. These YA girls don't like each other. Right, like I, I, I just... I, and I think, honestly, I wonder if it's because all of hers are contemporary. Like, I wonder. Because she does, like, all of them are contemporary. They're saying, like, what would be this time? Um, all of them are in, like, high school. Uh-huh. And it, but they're all in 
the type of high school they would be going to. They're with other people that look like them. And yes, there's occasionally someone who doesn't because, you know, that does happen mm -hmm. even like hood schools like where I graduated from. Right. But still, like, it's super honest. It's super yeah. real. And I, I love that even though I am by no means any part other than Black, I can relate to every single character in her story. Like every single main character, everyone that the story is following and looking through their eyes. And I love that. I think that that's how she does it. And I just wonder, like, I wonder if maybe that's why, right? Like, is it just because she's in contemporary? Because all these other people- I don't think so. Are... Okay, so you don't think I it's I mean, that no, because I'm thinking of like, excuse me, of Cameron, of Cameron Garrett, full disclosure, which that book does not get enough, enough hype at all for representing um, um, youth with AIDS that they like got from the birth mother. Um, mm -hmm. her, par her, her fathers are um, to get like, I think one of them is black and the other one is Latinx, I don't know. But like the representation of full disclosure is chef's kiss. It's really, really good. And a well, well, uh, full disclosure full by, disclosure, Cameron, okay. by Cameron Garrett, it's, it's because someone threatens to um, to tell the entire school that she is HIV, um, that she has HIV. And that's why she had to move from her other school because people found out and they started stigmatizing her. And they were like, oh, it's because you had all this unprotected sex and there was slut shaming and that's not the reality at all. And so she has a, a love interest who's really sweet and who like, they're really starting to get close. And then the notes start coming about like, if you don't back off with her, I'm gonna tell them that you have HIV. Um, so that's why, that's where it comes from. But a beautiful book oh my gosh beautiful book and contemporary um and then justina ireland has dread nation and like there there are plenty of white people in that and still like she represents mixed race people but she also represents like plenty of black girls now i don't see as many black men running around but it is also like for the first part of the first book is set and, and like a school a, a fighting school for a black girl so it explains why there are not a lot of black men around and she even still her first love interest is a black guy he's mixed race but he presents as black and he's living a black life um mm -hmm. so like even hey, where so with, in, the, in the other book that you were mentioning the full disclosure it was a black guy or it was a yeah, white right so that's guy. what i'm saying maybe it's contemporary like in contemporary contemporary writers don't have an issue writing black love Oh no, I'm saying like Cameron Gurr is a great example of that. But a lot of the critique that Legendborn has gotten is, is that there were no black people around. And then uh -huh. um, even in a book like, uh, what is it, L. L. McKinney's book, The Nightverse Trilogy. A Blade So Black? Mm-hmm. It seems like she was also surrounded by white people. Now, black things came up, like that place, that village in in uh, Wonderland of like black trauma, like that, like things. Like she still deals with things, but as, but theorizing blackness in the abstract and having black people present are not the same thing. And it seemed like besides Alice and her mom, everyone around them was white. That's that's what I understood, and those are contemporary books and fantasy so like and I was talking to you Deidre. Well, so that's what I'm saying like but I think the books that are only contemporary like not contemporary and something else right uh, okay. so okay. that's okay. what I'm saying so like so hers Maybe. are just contemporary YA like that's all Elizabeth Acevedo is like there's no magic there's mm -hmm. no travel to the world it's just America and what goes on in being an American student of color in high school Okay. And so I wonder if those writers like um, Cameron and just, well, and I know Justina Ireland is a little bit different because it's historical fiction, right? Well, and it's also uh, fantasy. Infinite. Okay, it's yeah. fantasy. Right. <laughs> so, right. So, but I think those that is just contemporary and YA, I think they are writing so much about what life is realistically. They don't need to create these struggles for their character right because mm. in the fantasy world if you're putting a black person in a world where it's a bunch of white people automatically you're creating a bunch of conflict for that character off top well yeah and and and, and legend born at the very least she does have 
some like she she does like look around and be like I'm the only like she that that does happen in Legendborn. It doesn't really happen as much in a Blade So Black. Like it's she's not really clocking that as an issue. Um, so I think that's the thing is like it's not a given that when these black girls are written into white worlds that that is going to be a source of conflict. Yeah, because I know I know for me being someone who graduated from a predominantly white institution, being someone who went to elementary school and spent middle parts of middle school and high school with predominantly white students and working in predominantly white industries, specifically predominantly white male industries, the mm -hmm. first thing I did was look for somebody that looked like me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that connection is, is an automatic thing. Now, if it's not there, I will connect with other people on other similarities that we might have. But off top, it it's a thing to look for people that look like me so that there is at least one person that I can take that mask off with. And it's right. odd to me that in these stories, that doesn't happen. Yeah. And you don't I, yeah. You have to be honest with in black culture if you're consistently around people that are not like you, there is a level of mask that you wear. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's just strange that that doesn't get acknowledged i don't understand right. that and and deidre from oak from shade tree reads that this when we we're having a conversation about ray bearer um that just like in your wildest dreams there are still this many white people and you're like because that's for me i would think especially in fantasy that you get to like have whatever kind of world you want and they're so it doesn't make sense to me that that in fantasy that would be where there are so many white people, even as a source of conflict. Because in your wildest dreams, you can't think of any other conflict but that, and that don't even be the predominant conflict. It wasn't the predominant conflict in Legendborn, which like, not saying that I wanted it to be, but it just it wasn't. She was just sort of feeling it sometimes, but it wasn't the predominant conflict. And I, in the books I read, it never is. It's just sort of like a fact of life. And I'm like, it, you dream of white people like this. I don't get it. That I don't get it. Now, do what you want to do. But as far as talking about um, how deep it goes for like black people, especially black men, because black women be around in these spaces in these in these books, regardless of if we like who their friends are or not. But black men are eerily absent right and it's very concerning yeah i know that in everything that i write it's important to have two black main characters or male characters for me mm -hmm. um like it's important because i remember being homeschooled and how hard it was for me to get my brother to want to read mm -hmm. because there were not characters that looked like him like I fell in love with Cassie Logan and her story. And she had these brothers, but it wasn't their story. Right. It was her story. Right. Um, like for him, I think we got we, you know, we got into, you know, Christopher Paul Curtis and Walter D. Myers, but that took a while to find for him. Mm -hmm. Like Rose Under Hear My Cry came out in 1977-76. Like mm -hmm. it had been out. And I think that that is something else that I'm like. I'm rooting for our black male writers out there who are fixing that. Um, I have not read any of her books yet, but it makes me thankful for Nick Stone. I haven't read any of her books yet, but I, it makes me thankful for her because she has a son. Right. She has two. She has two little boys mm -hmm. and her books are for them. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they're for the mm -hmm. young men that she modeled the books after because like I, I, I follow on Instagram and she's talked about that and like had them on her Instagram where like they were the the people that she did research with for the story. Like mm -hmm. I'm not from this perspective. I have my perspective as a black woman, but I'm going to go to these black men, these young mm -hmm. black men for them to tell me their experience. Yeah. And I appreciated that so very much. Mm -hmm. um so so very much so it, the, the, her books are on my like to read list solely because of how much i appreciate that mm -hmm. but her, her and then go ahead i was gonna say but you're right though it's not a thing like it's we, yeah. we see like it is and it's great it's great because what what i think i think what books do is what 
television and movies don't do as much right so in movies we black male leads have, are always a thing right like that's yeah. constant but in books it's not as constant and yeah. so now we have a lot of black female leads and that is the constant and i think mm -hmm. the bottom line for us as black people and americans in, in general is we have to find a balance yeah like neither one should overshadow or erase the other like right. i want to see black women and i want to see black men right like i don't want to just see one over the other right but right. i think that is the issue is i think that they're always like well this sells more so this is what we're gonna do and this is the thing not right this is what people need and it sells more because you have cultivated that media taste People don't right. want to see it because they've never seen it. Or you show these people in criminal, unintelligent, unworthy lights all the time. And so they expect only a certain story when those people show up in the, in the, in the media from newspapers to movies. And so if they don't want to hear a story about trauma, then they don't want Then when they see a black man, they're like, listen, I don't feel like watching 12 Years a Slave right now. It's like, well, that's not what the movie is. That's all it could be. Like, that's, you're crafting, you're creating, you're making our taste. So then to be able to fall back on and say, well, no one wants to see it, it's a, it's a circular argument. And that doesn't get acknowledged either. The, the extent that the media has gone to make, to create an expectation for certain people to lead certain stories. I agree. So, yeah. I agree. It, well, because like we, I mean, we do that and what we cast people in, right? So we will cast black, dark skinned women as dominating, domineering, mm -hmm. uh, go, 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 trying to get to this path of the career, don't care who's in their way, this mm -hmm. type of thing. And then we'll write light skinned women who are more acceptable and mm -hmm. more accommodating, want to be homemakers, and mm -hmm. they don't argue as much as if this lighter skin is the thing that makes them do that. Like those are stereotypes that we cast people into. And again, it, it goes back to obviously a much deeper issue with what we portray. Right. Um, and that, that's, I mean, like, again, when we talk about black women or black people writing these things, like Shonda Rhimes is a very big example of that, right? Like you put Imagine these black women in these situations, you said what? I said, imagine how tired we are. Right. The people are tired, Shonda. Right. I, go on. Right. But just, you know what I mean? Like, you, you watch these Black women write these roles, and it's like, well, you know that we're fighting these stereotypes. You know that every day that we live before this show existed, people already thought that this is what we were, and this is what we do, and this is what we act. There's not a and now because you're on prime television once a week, everybody sees you and everybody is like, oh, I want this woman and I want her to be like this and oh, she's but that's not really what you want in real life. You don't really want somebody that lies to you that much. You don't really want somebody that cheats on you like that. Like that's not a thing that you want. I, the premise of scandal I couldn't get with. The entire premise, I was like, thank you, next. Like, I... I had, yeah, so, yeah, I've never watched an episode of Scandal. Um, I tried, and I made it to season two of How to Get Away with Murder. Me too. And I was, I was pushing myself to get that far. Mm-hmm. I was I really pushing After West, the black boy, after he shot Annalise, I was like, goodbye. <laughs> I don't think I even made it that far. <laughs> I was like, goodbye. The people are tired, Shonda. Like, I, because what is this for me? She always, right, the writing, writes Black women as both Satan, as both Lucifer and Messiah. They are both the problem and the only cure. And so people either idolize them, and that's how it starts off, they idolize them. And then as we get to know them, we figure out that really, these Black women ain't nothing. They're the pro they create most of the problems that people that they have to end up solving. Like that's what you begin finding out. It's like they create problems and that they are morally gray and they do whatever they have to do, even if it hurts a lot of people. Like it's just ridiculous the level of trauma, emotional, psychic trauma that she pushes these black women to endure. And the entire time they're being heckled. 
I can't handle it. Yeah, yeah. I, she says that and she reads Theodora Taylor. It's an addiction, everybody. <laughs> it's an addiction. I had to, I was just sitting there like, girl, I don't care what you say. What you be telling me they be going through in these stories? I be over here clutching the pearls I do not have. Like, why is she going wow. through all this? No, no, no. Oh, and then it's like, and she's pregnant. Wait, what? What? Okay. I just cannot even. No, I... no, 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 no. Theodore Taylor and Shonda Rhimes are not the same person. <laughs> You, I will, I will thoroughly agree with that. I will thoroughly agree with that. See, they're not the same. And even with the adore, I'm like, now, Miss Taylor, you know that I love your plots, but I need some black men. I simply need them. Like, I do, and that's that is why I might buy. I mean, I, I don't like. I have Kindle Unlimited, so I don't have to buy Theodore Taylor's books. I just click and read them for free, which is why I can read so many of them back to back to back. I'm not paying any money for them. If I had to pay for her books, I wouldn't be reading them. No shade. I just wouldn't. Um, because there's like I, a set, I have to look past her covers to read her books. It's what makes me keep reading is at the end of the book when I'm reading, she will introduce a black woman who is like going through something interesting. And I'm like, what's her story? And there's always a white man attached to her story somewhere in there. If I'm just looking at her covers, I wouldn't be reading them because there's always these very hunky, white men on the covers, always. She never even has black women on her covers. So if I had to like pop, pay for that- Even back to that selling, back to that selling, right? Like- Right. You're reaching a target audience, an audience that is gonna look at a white man's body and be like, I'll buy this book. Right. I would not-, not that audience. I wouldn't pay for that book. Now, will I read what this black woman's doing? Yes. Cause uh, to your point, like if it was like a white woman with a black man, I'd be like, I'm good, thank you. I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't do it. And I don't want to. Um, I, I so off, I, I just see the fetish so much clearer when it's a white woman with a black man because of the way that they describe the man. And it just always smacks of sexual fantasy to me and I can't take it. I can't take it at all. I know you're sitting there judging me, but I have not read a Theodore Daler book in nine on two weeks. So you're gonna have to leave me alone. I, Okay, can we pause? Because I swear it was two weeks when we talked the last week. So oh, then don't, it was three. So, so, then it's been three. Oh, has it? Yes. Listen, right. you know I'm not good on details. Stop doing this. Like, stop playing. I'm, I'm, you know me in details. You're a strange I'm, cousin. I got questions. I got questions. Um, no, no. So, but I'll, 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 like, to be honest, though, I think that it is like, it is a thing that we are told more. And I mean, technically we know statistically they are two times like more likely to date outside their race than black women. But we are told that they do it a lot. So it makes mm -hmm. sense that like, that is more in your face than the opposite. Um, and then of course, with the thought that like, well, black women aren't burying black men. Like, no, like I, I sent you um, a link, but, uh, it says that 70% of black women are married by the time of college educated black women are married by the time they're 40 compared to 60% of only high school educated black women. Like, so the, this, this thought process that this doesn't happen isn't like these statistics aren't real. So like the, the statistic that gives that like black women don't get married. Yeah. That, that one, it includes black women 18 and under. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Right. So when you go <laughs> what? to the a not getting black married. Black women would get married. Right. Yeah, I, I sent you the link. So it's, it's always interesting, like, these numbers play to a narrative, right? Yes. They play to a narrative. Again, where I, like, in, at the, the university that I go to, I, I have, I, I'm a part of the Black Faculty and Staff Association, nobody in there is married to anybody that's not black not one person in there it's about 50 people i've seen in meetings mm -hmm. no one and they're all like mo almost all the women have doctorates this is so interesting because you're right like it this is the only narrative i have received so as i'm talking to you live and in color 
youth of color. And I'm talking to you live and in color. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm like just so sure of the statistics that you are referencing. And then you're like, yeah, but actually like here's the data breakdown and how like they're skewing the data to make you think that if you even have done the research, this will come up, but they won't tell you who's included in that or they'll put it in the fine print where you like have to really be looking to see who's in that number. Right, because the, the, what, the, what the thing is, is the truth is, is black men and women do get married. They get married later than their white counterparts. Amen. I'm not like, and me personally, so like realizing it, it does happen that way. Like a, a much more of my friends and things, like they didn't get married right after high school or right starting college. Like majority of them got married after they graduated. Well, you're 22, 23 at that point in time, depending mm-hmm. on like what your program is. Yeah. That's a big difference to a lot of my white classmates were married before they graduated. Really? Mm-hmm. I had quite a few that like were married before they graduated. They got their degree college? or got married like that. Summer. Yeah, college. And I had a good amount that actually got married like after high school. Really? I cannot imagine. By my second year of college, I had 10 friends that were already divorced. Well, I mean... You got married still. Yeah, never mind. It's not a place to say. But okay. All these things track. track. Right. Exactly. All these things track. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That is very interesting. Again, like writerly conversations, talking about the way things are represented and the way the narratives are told. Everything is a narrative. So, like, yes, of right. course, Theodora Taylor is a narrative and Sarah Lack Stowart, like D.A. Like, Young, like we talk, we, we can talk about authors and writers who are telling narratives, but the most um but the most dangerous narratives out there are the ones that we are consuming and don't recognize as narratives, right? right. The stories that we're being told that we don't recognize are stories that we're being told because then we just quote them like fact, right? Like we have we have to be so not curious. We have to be so investigative of every single thing that we encounter because there are so many, especially now, there are so many ways for you to receive news and they're not peer reviewed sources. Even sources that are peer reviewed, you don't look and see who's included in their, in their, um, in their data. Like you don't, you'll think that it's something that it's not like things can be misrepresented in data relatively easily. And most of us, if we don't have STEM backgrounds, like (laughs) cache, we're just going to be like, okay, skip to the bottom because all these big words, what is the number? Oh, it's so it's so and so percent. And then a small percentage of people like cachet are like, wait, 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 wait. Small Can we percentage. look at the numbers? Like, what are the categories? Like, let me let me zoom in on this graph. What does that right. say to that? Like, right. yeah, right. no, because it because no, because I like I I I had these same thought processes at mm. one point in mm. time, and like. I did use the thought that black men marry whoever and they don't Mm -hmm. care and did it as why I dated outside my race. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly, honestly, one of the biggest things that changed that thought process with me was moving out of my home state, leaving a different state and going to a different place where I was in Dallas. Everybody is dating black people. Like there were like, even where I worked in the place that I was being the one of only two black females that worked in that building all the other black people black men all married to black women mm. like I remember there was a man and his name was Mr. Henry and he came in and he was tall and I knew he was married and I was like okay sir um I know that you're from Texas and you're already here and I haven't been here that long and I hope you please please don't take offense to this question but please tell me your wife is black because I really need to find a hairstylist and he laughed so hard he's like yes she's black and I'll give you her number and I was like thank you because like I wasn't sure right like I didn't know and so like it was the thing but like the way me and his wife got close like off of that one conversation I had with him because she understood like right 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 that is the thing and again like I like I'm in Dallas like proper but I'm in Plano so again Plano is like that's a very suburb caucus like area 
comparatively to like Dallas, right? <laughs> like you think Dallas, you think Dallas, you think yeah. D Town Boogie, you think right, you Plano. It sounds if like you what know it what is. Plano is exactly right. So there we go. It sounds like <laughs> what it is. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So I like we could talk about this forever. But I think the the thing that both of us would would leave this conversation with is one, there is a definite narrative being pushed about the availability of black men, about the numbers and the health of black uh, relationships, and that there's a real fetish going on of of mixed race relationships. So it's not even about cachet or I saying we don't like to see it. I I'm not invested in your love life, sweetie. I don't care. Right. Um, like I feel like whatever makes you happy makes you happy. But I feel like for not this is a structural conversation. Like, right, right. For me, I feel like for a good portion of us, black parents made us. Why would we not still want to see what made us? Because me personally, right. like, like I want to see black happy couples because I need to know they exist. Like, right. I need that representation in my life. Like, think about what that does mentally to not see people that look like you happy together. Right. That's what I want to leave you with. Think about how that affects you mentally. We already know what it does when you don't see superheroes that look like you, when you don't see dolls that look like you. What happens when you don't see people that look like you in happy, healthy relationships? Right. Or that look like your parents, right? There's there's also like a pasting going on where it's like you can see older black men like sweeping the shop stuff but you don't see younger black men walking around in healthy relationships it makes it makes it seem as if black love is a bygone thing like oh yeah your parents were black but you like that's not an option for you to have that sort of relationship um so that's all that we want to leave you with the the presence of fetish the presence of narratives on a structural level we're not talking about interpersonally this is a structural project and it's long it's long standing and it's ongoing folks so that's all we want that's we want that's we, that we want woo that we want to leave you with in black history month and the month of love to join those conversations that it's always a structural project that should be the focus not an interpersonal preferential blah, 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 blah. no one cares i don't care but structurally this isn't this is an important conversation because people are being erased Right. Thank you so much, Cache, for joining me in this conversation. We've been talking about this for months. Um, once again, don't get hectic in the comments. Should we leave them a comment prompt? I don't know what to. I, I'm just curious your thoughts. Like, like, especially if you are not black, do you see erasure in your own like? things like if you think about it, like do you see hispanic stories where both couples are hispanic or latinx or do you only see where you can only find love as a latinx person if you're with somebody that doesn't look like you mm -hmm. i'm curious. or anything else like um indigenous like, indian like any any other ethnicity or nationality do you see your own love stories that are just purely delighting in, in your culture or does it always have I'm to not be mixed with something? I loved Crazy Rich Asians off of the fact that there were no Caucasians in it. Like, I loved watching a movie that was nothing but Asian people dealing with their, their situation and how they deal with it. Like, I loved being able to see that. And I remember there was, like, a Twitter storm because there were no white people. Like, I think the only white people were, like, passengers on the plane in the movie. We love to see it. I was here for it. I was here. So for it. that's a, that's a good comment prompt. So what Cache said, <laughs> that's the comment prompt. <laughs> Let us know. Well, what if do we have anything for the white people that might watch? Do they have a prompt? Because then there's plenty of white romances, like they're seeing themselves. 
Right. Like I feel like I feel like like in it like I the, yeah, I didn't think about them because like they, they don't get erased. Like they still write those. Why? Because there are white writers that don't feel comfortable writing anything but characters that look like them. Mm-hmm. Like that is definitely a thing. And I don't have a problem with those romances. I don't. Like I've read mm-hmm. one recently. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like mm-hmm. I, I personally, y'all heard me say it before. I would rather you write from your own place and let us write from ours and call it a day. Just move so, over and make space. That's it. Like if you don't want to do it, fine. Right. Please we don't do something you don't have the capability to do. I don't blame you for that. Because we'll drag that. you. Like, please. You'll be dragged. You'll be dragged. So don't do it. Like, do what you're comfortable with. We're just saying move over and don't block other people. If anything, like... You'd be like, you hey, when it's the month of love, let me also highlight Black women writers that write about Black characters. Right. Long. Post it on your platform. Like, yeah, that kind of stuff. That's enough. That, to me, is doing more than you probably have ever done anyway so you're well, doing thanks. so thank you right we appreciate it we do okay people we hope you're not too mad but if you are read a black love book and you won't be okay so um yeah <laughs> the end um, <laughs> we'll the see end. y'all next month We'll see y'all next month on Cash Shay's channel, Shay with the Hobbies. Meet us over there. We won't be as divisive, probably, but if we are, that's who we are. I mean, March is Women History Month, so. Oh, well, may- yes, we will be fine. I mean, maybe we will be. Maybe it doesn't matter. Like, if you don't know us by now. <laughs> right. And honestly, the tension, the, the intention is never to be divisive, but it right. is to bring attention to the things that do affect us as Black women readers and writers right that's it these are the stakes for us like if it wasn't about us we we would not go as hard for it that's just the truth all right we'll see y'all next month thank you so much for hanging and uh drop a comment definitely drop a big thumbs up share this with whoever you think would be interesting and have the conversation among your own friends like this can be a touchy subject you can have it with your own peeps and see where they stand in a privacy your own platform or whatever but until next month we will see you later Bye bye bye